The West Coast Railway connects Fort William to Malay and is 84 miles long. It was started in 1889 and completed in 1901. When the line opened, it ran with a steam locomotive. In 1967, the loco was withdrawn and replaced with a diesel engine. However, in 1984, in an attempt to boost tourism, a steam hauled service was reintroduced. Initially called the West Highlander, the train proved successful and was later renamed the Loch Harbour. In 1985, British Rail was privatised and West Coast Railways were granted the operating licence for the West Highlander trains. They introduced a new name for the train, the Jacobite, to reflect the many local connections to the historic Jacobite political movement. This train became so popular that a second daily Jacobite service was added in 2011. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. There is a little museum within Glenfinnan Station which tells the history behind the railway. It was conceived as a solution to end the barbaric treatment of crofters and cottages during the Highland clearances by providing a trade and tourist connection to the Scottish borders and England, where the Industrial Revolution was at its height. It also provided much needed employment to the area. No, I can hear it now. It's the Jacobite. Yay! Have a nice trip! <laughs> The viaduct itself is situated at the top of Loch Shiel and overlooks both the Glenfinnan Monument and Loch Shiel itself. It was constructed by Robert McAlpine and Sons 
and Simpson and Wilson were the civil engineers. Robert McAlpine was nicknamed Concrete Bob for his innovative use of mass concrete. Concrete was used because of the difficulty of working with the hard schist in the area. The Glenfinnan viaduct is built entirely from mass concrete. Mass concrete doesn't contain any metal reinforcement and is made by pouring concrete made with a very fine aggregate into a moulded shape known as formwork. The viaduct is 380 metres long and is famously the longest concrete railway bridge in Scotland. It crosses the River Finnan and stands 30 metres high, that's about 100 foot. There are 21 arches, each spanning 15 metres. It's 5.5 metres wide and carries a single track rail line which is operated by West Coast Railways. Construction of the viaduct itself began in January 1897 and it was completed in October 1898 at a total cost of £18,904. This um, area is made famous by the Harry Potter films and we have to admit that neither one of us has ever read a Harry Potter book or seen a Harry Potter movie and we're very sorry about that, are we? Yeah, uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Oh what? I nearly turned you off then. Hello. There is a long established legend that a horse and cart fell into one of the piers during its construction. However, despite investigations, this story could never be corroborated. In 2001, a local landover recounted hearsay from his father's time that the accident had in fact occurred at the Loch Nan Ua viaduct further along the line. Another investigation was carried out at the Loch Nan Ua viaduct in which radio waves were transmitted through the nine foot thick concrete walls. Incredibly, it was able to identify that there was in fact the remains of a horse standing vertically against the east wall above the wreck of a cart, implying that a cart had indeed slipped and dragged a horse with it into the pier. Well, we've made it to the top. Hopefully, the train will come along soon. It's the Jacobite Express, otherwise known as the Hogwarts Express. This is um, the scene of some Harry Potter movies. Made famous by the Harry Potter movies. And then there's lots of people that come along to come and see this steam train. It comes four times a day in the um, summer months. But it is actually an ordinary line as well, in between times as we've just witnessed because we've just seen an ordinary train come across. As well as the excitement of crossing the famous Glenfinnan viaduct, the line also takes in some impressive extremes along its spectacularly scenic route. It passes by Ben Nevis, Britain's highest mountain, Arasaig, Britain's most westerly mainland railway station, Loch Morar, Britain's deepest freshwater loch, the River Morar, Britain's shortest river, and Loch Nevis, Europe's deepest seawater loch.